Welcome back to the King's Report uh, for January 19th, Friday in 2018. And this is Tim Elder and Greg Knoll also here, uh, sitting in for the second king of Chanyuk, uh, Hyungjin Moon. And this, in this third hour, we are with uh, Carla Dadesi, who is an author of the Julia Child uh, Children, Julia, I'm sorry, Julia Children's Books, uh, which uh, is endorsed by the American Family Association and Susan B. Anthony List. Carla is a radio host and news correspondent on 1180 WFYL, which is a Fox affiliate in the Philadelphia area, uh, summer uh, 2017. She became a Fox national contributor on a panel called Parenting and Politics, which records monthly in New York City uh, indefinitely. She is a regular, regular on One American News Network. She and her family starred in Surviving Motherhood on TLC in 2007 to rave reviews. She has been a guest writer for Charisma News, uh, Bound for Life, and other publications. She is regularly interviewed and asked to speak regardly, regarding family issues. She shares her point of view with common sense, truth, and logic. She and her husband co-founded the Dadassi Family Homeschool Scholarship Fund. Wow, uh, we'd be interested in that. As an active vlogger, as she has over 6 million views on her videos. Carla is a family advocate, married 21 years to surgeon Dr. Len Dadassi. Uh, they are raising three daughters in Pennsylvania. Carla Dedesi can be followed on all social media. Good morning, Carla. Thank you for joining us. Thank you on this brisk morning. Yes, it is, isn't it? Uh, but it's going to get up to 38 degrees here, at least up here. I guess you're down in the Philadelphia area where it's perhaps a little bit warmer. Uh, you are also uh, the uh, Family and Faith Values Coalition leader for Paul Mango, uh, who is running for governor, uh, uh, who is running to become the Republican candidate for governor. Uh, I guess the, uh, the primary is uh, in, what, uh, four months from now, about uh, May 15th, I believe, and uh, who recently uh, appeared on the King's Report and, and uh, gave us a very uh, impressive uh, performance. Uh, we were very uh, impressed by uh, what he said, well, because it's really important in this time that we fight for family values when, uh, uh, when so much is uh, being done to to undermine those values. And it's really wonderful that you are doing this and that uh, uh, Paul Mango also uh, supports that. Uh, I think our, our just to, to sort of uh, connect and, uh, with uh, what was already done with the interview with uh, uh, Mr. Mango, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about why uh, Paul Mango would be such a, a great governor for, uh, for Pennsylvania? I'll speak first to his faith and family values, okay. which is what I am the coalition leader, but then I'll move a little bit into jobs and sanctuary mm -hmm. cities and some other things that are a concern to Pennsylvania citizens. But as a mom of three children and as a Christian woman, I always vote for the candidate whom supports life. In our Constitution, it rightly says that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life comes first. All others do not matter if we are not given the right to life. And since 1973, with Roe versus Wade, our government has decided not to protect the most vulnerable here in our country. What does that say about us as a people when we do not protect the most vulnerable? Today in Washington, D.C., they're going to be marching for life. They're going to be starting at the mall and then walking to the steps of the Supreme Court. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of pro-lifers saying, please protect life. This is the 45th March. We truly believe, under the guidance of President Trump and Mike Pence, that we are going... We lost audio here. Are you still getting audio? I'm sorry, Carla, we're, not, we're having a little bit of difficulties right now. I can't hear you in a, um, can you hold on?
And welcome back to the King's Report. Yes, we're back after we were rudely interrupted by some uh, technical difficulties uh, when uh, Carla was speaking about what a great governor uh, Paul Mangle would make. Carla, I'm very, uh, very sorry for that. Apologize for those uh, difficulties. Uh, we don't know what the cause was, but uh, they seem to have been resolved. Uh, so if you would uh, tell us again uh, where you were talking about uh, why Paul Mangle uh, should be uh, governor. Would you tell us about that, please? It's my pleasure, and I never mind interruptions. I just get to repeat myself. Hopefully I'll say it a little bit better and more eloquently this time around. So a few of the reasons that we are voting for Paul Mango, and it's such a blessing to be his faith and family coalition leader. One, he is pro-life. He believes that we should be protecting life from the moment of conception until end of death. So this is something that makes him stand out from Scott Wagner, who recently said that he's not a religious person and that although he considers himself pro-life, he actually believes that the Abortion Act here in Pennsylvania is doing a good job and he wouldn't change anything mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, we have Planned Parenthoods all across the state of Pennsylvania. We recently had Gosnell's what we call the death factory, which was in University City in Pennsylvania. Um, that was shut down. Um, when we discovered that he was um, aborting babies at 40 weeks, that um, girls were dying in his filthy, dirty clinic. So again, when you say that you are a pro-abortionist or that you are for choice, you are indeed saying that you are against life, that you are attacking women. This is a war on women. And we know that the the... People that are the biggest victims in this whole abortion war are the girls who are having the abortions. They've been lied to, to Planned Parenthood. And there are crisis pregnancy centers. They way outnumber um, the Planned Parenthoods in the state of Pennsylvania. And Paul mm -hmm. Mango understands that. He wants to defund Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Defund mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood. He does not want our tax money going to Planned Parenthood. Something that goes against my freedom of conscience, my freedom of religion, my tax money should not be going to this multi-million dollar business mm -hmm. that is killing our babies. So he wants to defund Planned Parenthood, and we'd like to use crisis pregnancy centers, which are great, um, great centers that do help women, um, but they do not do abortions. It's uh, uh, really wonderful that uh, Paul Mango is uh, coming out strongly uh, against abortion and against and in favor of defunding Planned Parenthood. That's certainly a, a big plus uh, in our book here. Uh, we were earlier in this broadcast this morning. We were talking about a. Um, uh, an effort in the U.S. Uh, uh, Congress, uh, the House of Representatives, to pass a bill uh, that would um, uh, limit or, or uh, ban abortions uh, once they, once there was a sign of life. In other words, once there was a heartbeat. And I was saying that that's great, except that it's being done in the U.S. House. I would rather that the that the states uh, take a, a stronger role in this, and that this be. Uh, rather than making this a, another way in which a central uh, power of the federal government is increased, that, that the states take a power or take take a front and center in this, and that uh, they um, uh, do the uh, the heavy lifting in terms of uh, reversing Roe versus Wade and uh, reversing that uh, uh, very terrible, tragic decision by the Supreme Court in 1973. And it seems like Paul Mango uh, is doing that. Mango's team agrees with you. We believe in sovereignty of the states. We believe in bringing local control back to Pennsylvania, whether that's with our education reform. Um, he would like to get education savings accounts, which might right. also be interested yeah. to families. So for those of us, I homeschool my young children, for example, and then I send them to public school. And there was something in your bio about a homeschool scholarship fund, wasn't there? Yes, yes, yes. That's Tell something us about that. that our family started because we started realizing that when we were at a lot of these music competitions and these recitals, one out of 10 kids was a homeschooled student mm. that was winning um, for playing the violin, for singing. And we looked at the families and we said, they need to be encouraged. They need to be edified. We know that our homeschooling families are growing by 10% across the nation. There's 2 million homeschoolers now. I think it's because many of us are getting tired of the indoctrination that's happening in the public schools. We also don't feel that our children's privacy is being protected in the public schools now that we have opposite its sexes, sharing bathrooms, locker rooms, and showers, by the way. That is another bill 
that uh, Scott Wagner is supporting. He is the sponsor of the bathroom bills. He is okay with opposite sexes sharing bathrooms, locker rooms, and showers. He does not seem to understand that this is a privacy issue. It's not about discriminating against anyone. It's about privacy. Paul Mango, by the way, has said that he will veto any bathroom bills that comes across his desk. He understands that this is a privacy issue, that you and I, Tim, deserve privacy in our bathrooms, locker rooms, and showers, period, end of story. You do not want me in your bathroom and I definitely do not want you in my bathroom. So let's go back to our homeschool um, scholarship fund that my family started, which you can get all the information about it at Carla Tedeschi on Facebook and Carla Tedeschi.com. But we decided that when you have a homeschool family, there's always one parent that's staying home. Usually it's the mom and mm -hmm. we take that as a privilege and an honor to stay mm -hmm. home and just pour into our children. Mm -hmm. I know that firsthand because I do homeschool my children. I still have a seventh grader home with me. So you're cutting down to one income coming into the home. Mm -hmm. And we noticed that a lot of these families were sharing instruments or perhaps they could only afford to have a piano teacher come out once a month or every other month. So we said, let's start a scholarship fund. So we were able to put a little money aside. And after four years of putting money aside, we now have close to $25,000 in that account. It's a little nest egg. And that account has been able to give about $2,000 to $2,500 a year to homeschool families in the Berks County, Pennsylvania. You have to be from Berks County. You have to be a homeschool student. You have to play an instrument. And um, then we've been able to buy instruments and provide uh, lessons for families. So that's been a real blessing. We've discovered in our family that when we bless others, we get more blessings than we ever uh, dreamed of or, or even thought about. Well, that's great. That's an example of a families helping families. Uh, and wait a second, uh, losing the audio again, are we? Or I can hear you. You can hear? Okay, I can hear you too. Uh, for a minute there, I thought that we'd lost you. But that's an example I was saying that families helping families, uh, yes. which is a, a lot better than the families relying on the government, uh, which is uh, what happens in too many cases where you have a problem and immediately you say, okay, what can the government do about this? But instead you've stood up, uh, your family has stood up and say, okay, let's help other families. Uh, that's, that's a fantastic, fantastic thing that you're doing. Tim, um, we believe that the government makes terrible family and the government is even a worse parent we believe that we should be going to our family first for help, and then the church mm -hmm. should be uh, filling in if there's a need. Um, now you have a, oh, I see. Um, okay, that, uh, I, was, I thought I was losing audio. What was actually happening was that I have a, a lag between the video and the audio. All right, so there's no problem. I just, appears to be a problem, that's all. Now you have a book uh, behind you there. Uh, uh, Julia is the title of that? Oh, yeah, tell us about Julia that, learns how to vote wisely. So my youngest is Julia. I've written four books now, and they're coloring books. They're all also been translated into Spanish. But Julia learns how to vote wisely is the first one that I wrote because I thought it was so very important. We had had a president in office going on eight years that was breeding a culture of death. He actually was quoted as saying, God bless Planned Parenthood. God cannot bless Planned Parenthood because they deny life to the most vulnerable in our country. And it never ceases to amaze me, God's grace on our country because we are killing his creation. He has been so very gracious to us and so very patient to us, but it's not gonna last that much longer. We need to get back on track, Tim. We need to turn back to God. We need revival in this country. And we need to present a culture of life, which is what Paul Mango is all about. So my children's book teaches my girls, as well as kids all across the country, that we should be voting for a candidate that protects life. Period, end of story. When we do that, everything else seems to fall into place. Mm -hmm. My second book was Julia Learns How to Marry Wisely because we also had a president in the White House that was telling us that there is no definition of marriage. You can marry whomever you wish. Well, in the Bible it says- Or sometimes marriage... whatever you wish. <laughs> That's correct, absolutely. You can marry your dog, your cat, your computer. <laughs> so we, um, I wrote a book that was teaching my children that marriage is between a man and a woman. Adam and Eve, it's not Adam and Steve. So, and, and this is not hateful words. 
This is loving words to present people with truth. The truth will set us free is what Jesus Christ said. Mm -hmm. And so with the truth in a very loving way, we need to get our um, community back on track that the healthiest things for our children, our families, um, our communities is to have marriage being a man and a woman. And then, and it's very sweet, it's a very loving book. I have adorable illustrator. And then my third book just was very um, laser focused on Julia Learns How to Protect Life because I've discovered in my conversation across the state that there's people that want to protect the whales, protect the trees, protect plants and animals, but they don't understand that we must protect human life first and foremost. And that's why I'm so grateful that we need your help in bringing Paul Mango to kill it in May. And then of course we have to win against Tom Wolf in November. Tom Wolf, oh yeah. We're confident that we are going to do that with your help. You can go to paulmango.com.org, sign up to be volunteers. We have close to a thousand volunteers. We need more because it is our moment. We are the pro-life generation. We are the pro-marriage generation. We know that when we protect the sanctity of marriage, economics falls into place, safety falls into place, right? You know this. When we do things God's way instead of the government's way, my goodness, are we not a happier, more content, peaceful nation? Well, it certainly seems that uh, Paul Mango uh, is the uh, candidate that uh, we would like to support here. The more we hear about him, the, the more we like yeah, the, um, the, the uh, protection of life, uh, the homeschooling. Um, and uh, what is his position on, on taxes? You know, uh, uh, Pennsylvania has some very high taxes, and especially gasoline taxes, the highest in the country. Uh, what is his, uh, not necessarily gasoline tax, but uh, what is his position on taxes? Very important. So he is a very successful businessman. You will know that he um, is not going to be taking a salary when he is in office for four years because really he is viewing this as a servant. He is a servant to the people. It's wonderful to hear him speak because it, it sounds like we're listening to one of our founding fathers or to someone like President Trump that knows that he is serving his country. He is not the elite, like some of the others that we have seen in office. And he does believe in small government. Um, he lives that lifestyle and he wants to decrease our taxes. He wants to get government out of the picture as much as possible. Uh, does he have any specific plans on how he would um, uh, cut taxes or, or decrease government or, or reduce government? Absolutely. If you go to paulmango.org, it is all laid out specifically for you, and I encourage you all to go there and take a look at his plan. It's a great business plan. Remember that he is an outsider. He's not an insider, so he has a lot of great um, ideas and suggestions for how we are going to take away the weight of this heavy tax that really has crept up on us over the last uh, 10 years, I would say. Um, again, he just believes in small government and local control. A couple other things I want to ask you about, uh, kind of related. Uh, actually, Tom Wolf is the one who sort of made them related. Uh, one is the uh, opioid crisis, uh, uh, and then the Second Amendment, because uh, Tom Wolf recently tied the two together because he declared a state of emergency in the opioid crisis. Sounds great, right? Uh, except that uh, we find that, according to Pennsylvania law, uh, when a governor uh, declares a, a, a state of emergency, then um, some of our, our gun rights uh, get um, um, restricted in a, in a way. Um, and so that sort of uh, um, um, <laughs> brings to mind maybe this guy's trying to kill two birds with one stone, or actually, uh, even in declaring that emergency, we're not really sure what is, what is being done in terms of the opioid crisis, but we do know that gun rights are being restricted. Uh, what is the, I'd like to know what Paul Mango uh, intends to do about the or if he intends to do anything, how, how should we, how, or not just Paul Mango, but in general, in your personal opinion, how do we deal with this uh, huge opioid crisis that is really, a, is, it is truly a crisis in, in Pennsylvania, that is for sure. Whether the state government should get involved, whether the churches should get involved, that is a, a matter for uh, discussion and debate. But definitely it is a huge, even here in the, uh, this area, northeast Pennsylvania, there's a huge uh, a heroin crisis. Uh, and um, uh, uh, other types of uh, opiates and opioids as well. Uh, give us your thoughts on that. You know, the Paul Mango is a veteran. He fought for our country. He's a graduate of West Point, as is his wife. He also has a daughter that's a graduate of West Point. He has five daughters. He believes in the right to bear arms. He believes that we um, are able to defend ourselves. 
Um, so that is, is one thing that I believe we have in common with you all. The opioid crisis, yes, that's something that he's going to address. He talks about it often. Um, what we would like to see happening is a lot of these frivolous laws like taxes on sodas and um, going around and policing who's drinking sodas mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. Um, these are things that we should be going around and identifying um, who is providing drugs to our children, to our families. Um, you know that Philadelphia is a sanctuary city. Paul Mango is against lawlessness. He is against sanctuary cities. We should be defunding the sanctuary cities. Philadelphia is not addressing the opioid uh, epidemic and that is attacking our families and our children because they are allowing lawlessness into that city. So we need to get back to looking at our real problems, not being distracted by things like who's drinking soda and mm -hmm. who's drinking sweet, uh, you know, drinks. We need to get back to um, the root of the issue. We need to get back to legal immigration, not illegal immigration. We know that a lot of these drugs are coming over our border that doesn't exist right now. We need a secure border. And... Um, Problems that are coming into um, places like Texas are also coming through right into Pennsylvania. We're looking a blind eye. We have a lot of illegal immigrants here, and they are also bringing with them drugs and diseases. Uh, it's hurting people. Uh, it's hurting our citizens. It's hurting our taxpayers. It's hurting our way of life. We're happy to have immigrants here legally. They must come here legally the way my grandparents did, the way Paul Mango's grandparents did. Certainly, um, uh, we see a lot of good in what Paul Mango is standing for. We uh, hope and wish him all the best. It would be, I think, for the people in this area, if he could have uh, something uh, more concrete in terms of how or what people should be doing and maybe he, he believes that uh, churches should do this or community organizations should do this. That would be a position, too. Uh, but really, in, in rural Pennsylvania especially, I would say, maybe even more so than in the urban areas of Pennsylvania, uh, the heroin and opioid uh, epidemic is uh, uh, destroying families and is uh, uh, something that someone needs to do something about. Uh, uh, and it would be great to hear him uh, speak, uh, speak on that or give a position on that. Uh, I think that would make him even more attractive uh, to the people uh, in this area. But certainly his uh, uh, stands on uh, the, the right to life, uh, on Second Amendment, uh, on immigration, uh, um, on uh, reducing government. Uh, uh, we see a lot of good in him, and we uh, hope uh, that he will uh, do well uh, on the May 15th of primary and then uh, later in, in the uh, uh, November uh, election. Um, Tim, if you go to palmango.com, he has his uh, attack on the opioid because he, mm -hmm. ha he even has a commercial on it, so okay. you, can, you can watch that. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. Uh, um, actually, we'll, we'll do that uh, after you have to leave uh, this interview, and then we'll make sure that our readers, our, our viewers, uh, uh, know about that before they uh, go on to the rest of the day this morning. I want to thank you, uh, Carla, for being with us this morning. I, I apologize for the, uh, for the technical difficulties. And um, uh, we will definitely be following a Paul Mango. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please remember to follow me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm always updating what's happening with Paul Mango there. And we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for having me. And God bless you for all that you're doing. Thank you very much. And we'll go to break now. And we'll be back with our viewers uh, after these uh, messages. <laughs> 